All right, hello. Welcome to version 0 0.6.0. Let's go ahead and show you the features of this one. So the biggest thing is the readability of the PFD and the MFD has been greatly enhanced. If you notice, we've changed some coloring around the, you know, it's kind of gray in certain areas. Everything's a lot more realistic and a lot easier to read. The contrast is so much better. I've also added the oxygen pressure. 1800 PSI, which is the standard pressure of the tank. It's not going to move right now because there's really no system involved with that. In fact, it hardly ever moves in real life, so at least you can see it. Um, so we've changed all of this. Everything should be much easier to read. We've changed the size of the HSI on the MFD to be larger. On the PFD, we have uh, changed... Well, you can see the Barrow is a lot better to read now as, as well as the Mach number which also the mock hold was changed as well. It's actually, it's not really holding the speed very well, but uh, now you can actually set it and it should be correct. We've also increased the legibility of this a little bit. Oh, what's it doing? So uh, that'll be a lot better. And let's see, what else do we do on this page? Uh, well, I think you can kind of see for yourself. It's so much easier to read now. So you'll probably enjoy that one. All right, on to the FMS. So in the legs page, we'll just start with that since I had it up. We now have proper crossing restrictions showing. So for example, at Bruin, you're gonna have to cross it below 30,000 and above 24. So now it should show the proper altitude constraints. The uh, speeds right now are not gonna be correct in every arrival. For some reason, the speed constraints aren't in the same location as the altitude constraints and we have no idea where it's coming from in the sim and we can't really verify it so that'll be at for a different time unfortunately we don't have vnav in yet we're working on it however the uh altitudes here should show up and they should also show up correctly for the approach as well so lima is our final approach fix 1900 so uh that's going to be pretty nice at least you can give a good idea what to expect uh, the takeoff perf page, we added some better uh, input logic for this. So if you don't throw any out, don't, don't throw any temperature in here, and you go to the next page, it's not going to give you any V speeds or takeoff field length because you need that number in there. And there's a few more checks as well for temperature. The Q and H now automatically just comes right from the PFD. So before you set all this up, you know you press B or whatever, and it changes that number. It's just going to automatically be filled in there. So there's really no reason to even really set that thing. So um, let's see what else we got there. Uh, on the legs page as well, once you're doing the SimBrief importer, it will give you an error message if there is a discontinuity between what the waypoint it's trying to load from SimBrief and in the the game database so sometimes they're causing errors where you're trying to load something and it would just stop after one certain waypoint or something like that so now it's going to give you an error to tell you that uh, of where to actually look at so that'll be nice uh, we've also added an issue when you're loading arrivals and approaches where sometimes it would double up the fix let's say the last fix of the arrival is one of the first fixes of the approach sometimes it would double those up so we got rid of that which is nice. On the tune page, we fixed a bug where trying to swap on the COM2 frequencies would, uh, oops, would swap it on the COM2 side, so that's nice. Now the transponder also works. You can turn that on and off, and it should. Well, it does work for the sim, um, but it does work for, it doesn't work for VATSIM yet because they don't have the logic to detect this, but it's in the sim, so it should be good. So once I get that in, you can actually turn it on this way. At least your mode C transponder is how you do it right here. So let's see, we have, ah, yes. Other thing about the PFT is we now added bearing pointers. So if you go to the PFT menu and scroll down to bearing source, you have the bearing pointers. So it's, uh, it's knobs or paint go and select FMS1, you can see it's pointing in the course for FMS if you went to VOR. And it's not showing anything yet because we don't have anything tuned in here. Um, let, me, uh, let me pull something up. Let's see, let's go throw in a VOR in there. I think I just departed Salt Lake, so let's try... 
is at 108.2. Let's try that one. So we're going to put 108. Oops, wrong one. 108.2. Go ahead and throw that in there and see if it uh, comes up. No, it's not coming up. I should have planned this better, but if you put that in, it's going to show it's going to point to the VOR and it's going to give you your distance as well. And you can do that for ADF. And you also have the option to Oops, <laughs> clicking all sorts of stuff. You've got the option to display both of them, and it will also display it over here as well. So a lot of people are requesting that to do VOR approaches and uh, I think like NDB approaches and all that. So now the functionality is there, and I hope you have fun with it. All right, so next on the MFD, we fixed the... Oh, let me slow down so I don't overspeed here. We fixed the pitch trim here. It was actually backwards from what was showing, and we also changed the default elevator position so now you shouldn't be flying off the runway at 115 knots so if you're within the green here you should be okay we've also changed the ISA deviation right here the calculation was incorrect once you get above 36,000 feet which is the tropopause generally the altitude just remains or the speed the temperature remains constant up until like the stratosphere or something like that so we've uh, adjusted those values so it won't be incorrect We've also changed the battery amp display. It's a lot more in line with what it should be now. It's not going to show minus 500, but there's the electrical system is still in the works. Uh, we haven't really done much to it yet, but there's definitely a lot of work to be done, but now it's not going to be as ridiculous. We've also changed the hydraulic system. So now it's actually tied to the N2, which is the gas generator in the engine, and the tower shaft that comes off the N2 runs all the accessories such as the fuel pumps, the FADAC generator, the alternator, and all that kind of stuff, and the hydraulic pumps. So the hydraulic, hydraulic pumps will spool up um, 3,000 PSI, so they should be at about 20% N2. So you're not going to see this varying at all uh, in flight, so that's nice. And that pretty much sums it up for this patch. Uh, we definitely have a lot of work going on in the background. As far as VNAV and new flight plan manager, which allows us much more flexibility than the default program here, as far as making our own custom waypoints and crossing restrictions and you know doing bearing bearing or bearing distance waypoints and all that, flyover waypoints, discontinuities, vectors. It's a lot of stuff that we're limited right now that we can't do. That we've been doing a lot of stuff in the background. So uh, just be patient. It's coming out. Doing a lot of tests. And uh, I think you'll enjoy it. So have fun with this patch. I think uh, a lot of good quality of life improvement, especially with this uh, PFD here and the MFD. I got this backwards. But all right, so I uh, guess I'll see you guys around.